I'm still digging up dahlia tubers and uh, these uh, ones uh, were removed from the uh, polytunnel there's about 20 or so plants in there maybe a few more um, including the cafe au lait and um, I removed uh, these not the cafe au lait yet um, uh, from the ground uh, yesterday uh, the plants have been growing reasonably well although I felt they could have been better um, uh, putting out uh, flowers um, although not perhaps quite as as good as the outside dahlias um, they're on brand new ground so I was willing to accept that but when I've dug them out I've actually found that they're infected by or some of them at least are infected by uh, leafy gall so I thought I would show you that and uh, have a discussion about leafy gall what it is um, and it's um, uh, importance and its control. So there are uh, two varieties here which are uh, infected. They were uh, in the beds next to each other but there were other uh, dahlias uh, in the bed as well uh, fairly close by and they don't seem to have been infected. Um, so I think we can say from this that certainly infection does pass from plant to plant and that more than one variety can be infected because we have two varieties here white knight and ambition um, which were next to each other and one seems to have infected the other um, but there are also other varieties and it's safe to say i think it's accepted anyway that some varieties um, of dahlias are not particularly susceptible uh, susceptible to um, uh, leafy gall whereas others are leafy gall is a uh, uh, an infection which can affect um, many types of plants not just dahlias um, it can become a problem in the outbreaks can occur which affect uh, productivity uh, of uh, uh, vegetables and flowering plants um, uh, but in general I think it's a fairly low-key type of infection uh, in as much as plants aren't destroyed by it and the infectivity and the expression that is whether the uh, uh, infection causes damage to the plant is actually quite variable. In other words, a plant can be infected by uh, the uh, causative agent uh, and have not too much in the way of ill effects, still put out flowers, etc. So we'll have a look at these, uh, some of the features of leafy gall uh, that we can see, and then we'll get them. We'll get some out to have a much closer look. So. This is an um, uh, 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 ambition uh, variety and um, uh, the, so the changes that were immediately visible, although sometimes it's very difficult to see these changes until you actually uh, lift the, the tubers. Um, it, you can spot it if you look carefully but as you can see it's at ground level and often with lots of other foliage around about and uh, stuff it's it's difficult to uh, to spot it and it can be easily missed and the plant can be doing uh, uh, quite well so you wouldn't their attention wouldn't be drawn to it uh, but this is um, leafy there's a bit of damage to it as I remove the plant but you can see that there's an abnormal uh, 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 growth here of um, of leafy stems uh, because I've damaged the leaves it's difficult to see in this particular example uh, but this one you'll you'll find that the leaves themselves are small they're distorted uh, and they are um, and they and they grow much less well than a normal um, a normal shoot would so uh, we'll have a closer look at this one later This one here, which is White Knight, which you would look at and say, oh, perhaps there's just a few shoots coming, uh, no problem. But in fact, um, I'm pretty sure that this is leafy gall. There's an area here where the the, um, the stems, uh, sorry, the the um, insertion points of the tubers are, um, are oddly shaped. They're pale in colour and um, they look distinctly abnormal and then this shoots coming away from it here so so this I'm pretty well certain is leafy gall 
So this is ambition and we'll have a look at it and see what features you may see when uh, looking at a case of uh, leafy gall. So this part of the plant actually is fairly normal so we can see we've got tubers, we've got the necks and the insertion point here uh, which are uh, 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 normal. I've got a normal plant here, a different uh, variety and you can see that the tuber, the neck and the insertion point are all very familiar to you I know. There are some swellings around this area such as this one, this one and this one but they appear to be made of the uh, correct tissue, it's pale in colour, the uh, surface is the same as the rest of the plant. And if we look at this one, the same area here, here's the tuber, the insertion point is somewhere inside that mass of pale distorted tissue which is lumpy in nature, the word gall means swelling or tumour. So uh, these are the galls, these round swellings here are the galls and then they're putting out shoots, leafy shoots. So this particular kind of gall is leafy gall. So uh, leafy gall, this is caused by a bacteria, um, Rhodococcus fasciens, uh, uh, which is, um, uh, has got many, many uh, variants. Uh, but only one of them is pathological. So the bacteria enters the plant, they say, through areas of uh, damage. So um, a slight uh, a damage to the um, surface layer to the skin will allow the bacteria to enter the uh, plant. And that can occur any time uh, uh, during planting uh, or during the life of the plant as it grows. So uh, the bacteria uh, gets into the plant and then causes some changes which take some time and those changes give rise to the uh, typical appearance to the galls and to the uh, distorted leaves. What actually happens is that the bacteria uh, together with its genetic component um, mixes with the uh, genes in the cells of the infected plant and the, um, the, in, uh, the infection uh, causes a change in the genetic makeup of the um, of the host plant uh, uh, which then goes on to cause uh, uh, various physiological effects. Uh, the one that we can see is where um, normal growth suppression is, uh, is uh, suppressed uh, so that um, there's increase in growth of the tissues that are infected uh, by, the, um, uh, by this process and that's where the galls come from so these swellings here, distorted swelling, not normal tissue. You could say that that is like a tumour, uh, like a tumour that would occur in, a, uh, in an animal. Um, the cells are out of control, so to speak. Mm. Now, uh, just the presence of the bacteria um, in the uh, plant uh, tissue will not necessarily cause the uh, genetic changes which give rise to gall and give rise to the damage. Um, and this is why we know that uh, certain varieties um, uh, of dahlias um, are resistant to these changes and, and other ones are um, uh, uh, much more likely to occur. Uh, we don't know why that might be. It's the same with uh, lots of uh, with the other plants that are infected by this bacteria. Some of them seem to be uh, uh, quite uh, poorly resistant and others are very resistant uh, to the disease taking hold. Um, it's said that uh, if you are infected by um, a leafy gall, uh, the bacteria can be present in the soil then, is say for up to about two years. And so, um, if you're infected by le if your plants are infected by leafy gall, the standard thing to do uh, uh, is to remove the plant, to remove uh, uh, much of uh, as much of the soil as possible, uh, and. Um, also to consider removing other plants nearby that don't appear to be infected because the, inf the infected bacteria, the infective bacteria can be present uh, both in the soil and in the uh, plants that are not showing signs of the infection. Um, it's your decision whether you uh, want to throw away um, lots of apparently normal dahlias uh, or, uh, or whether you prefer to 
uh, take a chance, so to speak. Now the expression, in other words, of whether this disease actually causes um, its, um, its effects or not, uh, is said to be dependent on a number of things uh, which might give a clue to the uh, possibility for future management um, of the infection. Um, currently there, are, there is no uh, curative uh, treatments uh, for this infection. Um, but environmental factors apparently make a difference to whether the disease process gets a hold or not. So for instance pH um, uh, acid conditions are said to be more favourable for the uh, uh, for resistance. Um, carbon sources such as um, sugars and starches uh, the availability of those ca can uh, alter the expression of the of the disease so that um, you can imagine healthier plants uh, with lots of carbon storage are much likely to be able to resist uh, this disease and then um, other things such as uh, availability of oxygen phosphate um, and cell density, all of which are said to make a difference to whether this disease can um, get a hold or not. So I think it's good advice to say that if uh, you do have tubers infected by leafy gall then you should certainly get rid of that uh, plant and dis uh, destroy it, not put it on the compost heap. Um, uh, and you should carefully inspect other nearby plants to see whether they're infected. If you do have a um, a group of uh, the same variety then it would be wise to discard all of that variety. As far as uh, measures you can take to prevent it, well um, uh, you can uh, get rid of the bacteria in the soil by um, pasteurizing the soil, by heating the soil, um, but uh, obviously this is uh, uh, an option only in a very limited number of cases because uh, you'd need to uh, heat heat a lot of soil to kill the bacteria off. So in general we say um, get rid of the infected uh, plant uh, plus other plants nearby possibly and then not to use that area uh, for planting susceptible plants uh, in the following at least two years. So uh, where I got these, where I dug these dahlias out I'll certainly not be planting dahlias uh, in there again. And then all the normal things of good cleanliness, so when uh, when dealing with uh, infected tissue uh, like I am now I'll certainly discard any, uh, I've used paper here uh, so that I'm uh, not uh, infecting my my worktop. Um, I've used brown paper so uh, I can discard the whole of the brown uh, paper together with the infected plant. Any instruments that we've used for that plant um, uh, such as uh, snips, secateurs, uh, you would want to sterilize before using elsewhere. And then when dealing with uh, uh, you know, propagation in general, good propagation practice, uh, clean utensils, uh, clean uh, uh, pots and trays, um, etc. And sterilization of instruments between um, one plant and another. So I hope that's been helpful and I do hope you don't have too much in the way of leafy gall but if you do you'll know I hope now how to recognize it uh, and, uh, and what to do about it. So thanks very much indeed for listening to this uh, and watching this video and hopefully I'll see you again for next time. Okay, bye, bye bye for now.